Democrats are going full steam ahead with the impeachment probe tonight. Subpoenas, letters, warnings that suggest Speaker Pelosi was dead serious when she made her announcement exactly one week ago tonight. Today, I'm announcing the House of Representatives moving forward with an official impeachment inquiry. I'm directing our six committees to proceed with their investigations under that umbrella of impeachment inquiry. I'm joined now by Congresswoman Maxine Waters. She chairs one of those committees and has been leading this charge to hold Trump accountable. Good evening. Good evening. What's changed in the past week? And is the Ukraine scandal, in your view, worse uh, than the other issues facing Donald Trump or just a collective uh, a kind of a collective explosion? Well, the Ukraine uh, scandal uh, certainly, I think, gives us factual information quickly. Uh, we know the telephone call was made to the president. Now we know uh, basically what was said on the telephone call, and we know who uh, was on the telephone call. And so I think that uh, this gives us uh, great information uh, to move forward with impeachment. And as the speaker has said, should be perhaps the focus of what we do. But all of the other things that the six committee chairs have been working with will be discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't know exactly how many of these issues will be in the impeachment resolution, but we're going to, we're going to talk about them. But yes, Ukraine uh, is going to be a focus. And Congresswoman, I want to ask you about something you said. As, as you know, and many of our viewers know, uh, you speak your mind. Uh, many people like that. And as I think you know, many people disagree with you. It's politics. That's right. uh, I want to read something you said today to get a fuller understanding. You said, okay. with regard to Donald Trump, he's using mob language. He's implying people should be killed for whistleblowing. Impeachment's not good enough for Trump. He needs to be imprisoned and placed in solitary confinement. But for now, impeachment is the imperative. That's um, right. I ask you tonight, are, are you speaking literally uh, and do you have any concern you're prejudging the House impeachment and Senate trial process by declaring he should be, I, I guess, convicted and, and held in solitary? No, not really. Uh, uh, as you said, uh, I said impeachment is the imperative. I did express myself in ways to show how terrible I think he is and how he really should be punished. But, of course, impeachment is what we're focused on right now. With regard to allegations of obstruction, uh, one of the things that the facts show this White House has done more extremely than others, in including really the Nixon White House, uh, is try to defy a lot of different lawful requests from your committee, from others. Um, when we see chair, uh, multiple chairs say this is now going to be itself evidence of obstruction, what does that mean? And do you join the other chairs in that? Are you saying that if, if you don't get responses by a certain time, what happens to those uh, White House or agency officials? Well, I do agree um, that, you know, this president has instructed those who we have been subpoenaing not to come before our committee, not to cooperate. It is outrageous in what he is doing. And now that we have more information, factual information, for example, that Pompeo was on that telephone call, uh, he must respond to the subpoena. He must come forward or he could be charged, I believe, with obstruction of the impeachment. And I don't know everything that goes along with that, but I certainly hope that it means we can drag him in or we can arrest him. Wow. Uh, I want to play for you uh, some of what you said during the last time um, these issues came up during the Clinton impeachment. Take a look. Yes. This is a bunch of baloney. I'm not a lawyer. But I could argue this case in court and win. I think Mr. Ken Starr is the poster boy for all of the bad prosecutors in America. Obviously, many of the facts are different. What do you say to people this time around to argue that Donald Trump's uh, case, potentially articles of impeachment against him, are different than those against President Clinton? Oh, I think decidedly different. I think that, you know, if you take a look at this president, ever since he defined himself uh, doing his primary election in the way that he treated his peers, the way that he called names on into the election, the way that he talked about grabbing women by their private parts, what we know about his defense of Putin and the 
the fact that he has ignored the intelligence community in identifying uh, that he cer they certainly was involved with undermining our elections, hacking into the DNC, the way he has insisted on private meetings uh, with our enemy, uh, that is Putin, and the way that he's insisted on private meetings with Kim Jong-un, on and on and on. This president has advocated violence. Uh, this president, in my estimation, was eligible for impeachment long before mm. this. Yeah. And it does not even compare with what was going on with the Clinton impeachment. And so I do believe that we now have factual information about him attempting to engage the president of the Ukraine in getting dirt on Biden. The telephone call was made. The information is there. And this just adds mm. fuel to the fire. Uh, and Congresswoman, I want to move beyond Washington, D.C., where there's obviously a lot of important news, to another story uh, that I know is, is in the wheelhouse that you care about and something we cover a lot here. And it's something that's actually rare. Uh, former Dallas police officer Amber Geiger was found guilty of murder. She shot and killed her neighbor last year. She mistakenly entered his apartment and opened fire. Sentencing will be tomorrow. The case has ignited much debate over race and the criminal justice system. And as you know, uh, Congresswoman, uh, the tendency in the statistics where officers are more likely to use force and deadly force against minorities. Uh, your reaction to this, uh, which viewers will understand, is, is a, a rarity, a, a murder conviction for an officer. Well, uh, <clears throat> this officer certainly didn't have any credibility in her defense. It is unbelievable that she didn't know where her own apartment was, what floor it was on. Uh, she didn't know that there was a red a doormat uh, in front of his apartment. It wasn't in front of hers. To walk into a room and not know that that's not your furniture and shoot and kill an unarmed man, I mean, she deserves uh, what has happened and the decision that has been made. She committed murder. I I don't care if she's a police officer. I don't care who would have done something like that. They deserve to be convicted. And so I'm pleased she was convicted. Uh, she didn't have a good defense at all. Mm -hmm. I uh, wanted to get your reaction to that. As you know, it's a big story. Uh, Chairwoman Maxine Waters, always appreciate your time. I hope you come back on the beat. Well, I absolutely will. Just invite me back. I'm happy to come and join you. There we go. Uh, thank you, ma'am. We'll be watching and watching your committee quite a bit. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here. Or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.